Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to episode 39 of the Gaming Rules Podcast, where I talk about the games that I've been playing and various other things that I've been up to. Joining me as a special guest in this episode is none other than Tom Vassell from the Dice Tower, joining me to talk about different board game conventions that we've both been to. In this episode, I'm going to try to briefly cover where I've been for the last six weeks, as it's been a long time since my last podcast. I've also got the winners of the two previous competitions to announce. For those listeners who want to stay up to speed as to what's going on, my Twitter account gets the most regular updates, that's at GamingRulesVids, then there's the Gaming Rules Facebook page, and also there's the BGG Guild, which is guild number 2258, and thanks to everyone who posts and contributes to the guild. Thanks as always to the sponsors of the show, GamesLaw, the UK's largest specialist games retailer, at GamesLaw.com. Gaming Rules News. So for regular listeners to the show, I know it's been quite a while since my last podcast, and those of you that follow me on social media will probably know why. After Podcast 38, I attended Manacon in Leicester, which seems so long ago now. Um, I got back from there, had a shed ton of work to do to catch up on before I headed off to America, and I had the Codenames Pictures video to finish, which, if you haven't seen it yet, Codenames Pictures video has been finished, and it got released just before Gen Con, so uh, if you want a good laugh, please go on and see that, because Vlaja wanted something amusing for the opening scene. So uh, if you don't watch the entire video, please watch the opening scene. Um, like most of my videos, the number of views that it's had has been slightly disappointing. So yes, if you do get a chance, please pop on there and have a look. So then, as soon as that got finished, pretty much I headed off to America for two back-to-back -back conventions. The first one was WBC, which is the World Board Gaming Championship. Now, it's not really the World Board Gaming Champion. Well, I mean, it is because that's what it's called. And it's a very different convention from most of the other ones. I'll be talking about conventions later on in the show with Tom. But the focus of WBC is on tournaments. There are a few retailers, but that's quite small. There is an open gaming area, but a lot of people go there to play tournaments. And there is also a heavy focus on war games. That's not to say that there isn't any other kind of gaming going on. I know a few people that have said, oh, I don't go to WBC because it's all war games. It's not. There's a lot of that going on there, far more than any other event, but there is lots of other gaming going on as well. So from WBC, uh, that finished on the Sunday. I then travelled on the Monday to Indianapolis to get everything ready for Gen Con. And Gen Con was insanely busy. I can't go into all of the details about what Gen Con was like. I did take my video camera with me and filmed a whole load of stuff there for a video log. I'm probably not even going to get a chance to put that all together just because I'm so far behind on other work. So got back from Gen Con, managed to get some sleep and then straight away dived back into the work. Um, now mentally and physically, that's not the best thing to do. I could have really done with giving myself at least sort of one day off. Um, but I was behind on work, had so much to catch up on, so I just threw myself straight back into it. Nine days later, I managed to finally unpack the suitcase. Um, that was the first time pretty much I had to myself. Um, and then, I, the next day, I headed off for the weekend to visit some board game cafes. So I spent this last weekend just gone, uh, and I went to Thirsty Meeples in Oxford on the Sunday, and on the Saturday I went to Chance Encounters in Bristol. So I went to them to basically do preview demos of Codenames Pictures, because Codenames Pictures is not out yet in the UK. So I gave the cafes a copy of the game each and spent the day demoing it to, to lots of people. And then yesterday I spent all day in bed with a migraine and sickness, because basically I, I, I burnt out. So um, I'm now really behind on stuff, but I don't want to stop doing the podcast, even though it's getting in the way of the actual uh, work that I have to do. But anyway, let, let's move on. So work-wise, what things have I been up to? Well, apart from obviously attending all of these conventions and doing demos, all the other stuff has been going on in the background. The Robinson Crusoe rulebook is finally finished, and that has now gone to print. I've also been working a lot on the Gloomhaven video. Now, the Gloomhaven videos are going to be a massive challenge because it's a big, complex game. Um, but I'm going to try and keep the videos as concise and clear as possible. I'm not going to be throwing in every single rule of the game, because it's a 50-page rulebook, but I'm going to be trying to do my best to give everybody a good overview of how the game plays, um, basically, to, 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 to give the people who bought a game an introduction so that they can watch the video before they dive into the rulebook, or, or afterwards, or people who are just interested in the game. 
So I'll be working on those videos over the next number of weeks. Uh, I've got to fit them all in around the other work, so we'll see how it goes on. I've also got lots of other bits going on in the background, various other bits of rule books and game development, but I, I won't go into too many details. I'm also, in this podcast, not going to really talk about the games that I've been playing. There have been quite a few over the last six weeks, but that would be a two-hour podcast all on its own. So if you did want to hear about one of the games that I've been playing recently, which is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition, I did do a 10-minute slot on the What Did You Play This Week podcast thing. Now, this is one of the podcasts that I do listen to. Uh, all of the people that contribute, it, uh, contribute to it, I, I really enjoy listening to everybody. And when I kind of said to a few people that my podcast is going to have to take a side um, position for a bit because I'm just too busy, people said, oh, well, why didn't you just record a slot on there? And I was like, well, I'd like to because I really do like the podcast and I'd love to be a part of it, but I've not even got time to do my own podcast. So anyway, I decided to basically ramble on for 10 minutes. I hadn't scripted it. I just basically shared my thoughts on what I thought about it. And that's gone into the latest episode. So that episode is available now if you wanted to hear about that. The other thing I wanted to announce for this podcast is the competition winners. So way back when, in, com in podcast 37, I had a competition. Uh, yeah, that does seem a long time ago now. Um, the competition was to win a copy of The Networks by Gil Hover and Formal Ferret Games. And to enter the competition, what you needed to do was come up with the name of a show which could appear in that game. And what I did is I got all of the entries, put them into a Google Sheet, I rated them myself, I then sent it to Gil, who went through and basically rated them himself as well. Um, we didn't use a combination of the two scores, he just used his score, which is absolutely fine. I just wanted to give my thoughts on them. And Gil couldn't decide between two of the winners. So what he's done is he's generalistly given two copies of the game, and we ha so we have two winners. We have David Estall for Lies of Our Daves, and Lewis Holt for Stop Hitting Yourself. Now, I'm secretly hoping, well, not secretly, because I've said to people, but I'm kind of hoping that the game is really popular and it's selling out, you know, and it's doing really, really well. If Gil does an expansion set for this game, I'm kind of hoping that these two shows might actually make it into the expansion set. So I'm not promising anything. I've suggested it to Gil. It would be really cool. He thinks they're both worthy winners of, of, of uh, well, they're both worthy shows to, to win a competition. So we'll see. So anyway, congratulations to those two winners. They have now received their copies of the game. So that's all good. And in podcast 38, I did another competition to win a copy of Microfilms, um, which is from David Mortimer. And the competition was to basically tell me what the white cube in Twilight Squabble is and where does it start the game. And the winner of that competition is Ian Ransom, who correctly said that the white cube starts in the middle of the DEF contract. It starts on DEF CON 5 and it basically tracks the balance of power between the two nations. So, Ian, I will get in contact with David and we'll get your copy of Microfilms off to you as soon as we can. So that's a bit of a catch up on where I've been going on. Um, on with the next section. Guest. So I'm happy to welcome onto the show as a special guest with this week, no other than Tom Hanks. No, it's not Tom Hanks, is it? It's Tom, Tom Vassell, that's it. So uh, thank you, Tom, for joining me on the show this week. That's a nice mistake to make. Thank you. I, as soon as I said that the Tom was coming on the show, I got a number of uh, tweets and Facebook messages about, oh, you've got Tom Cruise on the show and, oh, you've got Tom Petty on the show. And uh, yeah, so I kind of... Um, I think I like the Tom Hanks better. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I've had lots and lots of questions in for Tom Hanks about games, but I won't ask you them. Uh, we'll jump straight into the topic of conversation, which is conventions. Now, both of us have been to many of these conventions. You've probably been to more of them than I have. Um, but it's just to give people an idea of, of, of the different conventions that are out there and what we like and dislike about each one and pretty much a comparison. Um, and this year, you went to the UK Games Expo for the first time. So let's cover that one first. What was your initial impression? Well, my initial impression was still just getting used to being in England itself, which was a, a, a fun experience. And the weather. Yeah, the weather was kind of a surprise to me <laughs> because it was summer and I just figured you had summer weather. Uh, but and that was summer. Yeah, yeah. well, so I'm warning. It means not rain <laughs> or less chance of rain. It just is funny because the summer weather there is cooler than the winter weather here in Florida. Yes. But yeah. but the my initial impressions were really surprising. I, I, I thought 
I don't know what I expected to to see, but it was a very laid back convention, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. A lot of conventions have a frenzied thing about them, like Gen Con and Essen. The UK Gaming Expo does not have that. Um, It also has a higher emphasis on the Ameritrash style of games and miniature games than I had expected, but I guess that makes sense with Games Workshop being in the area. Yeah. But there was a lot more of those being played than probably the traditional Euro games, as far as I could tell. I know they had the largest X-Wing tournament was there. Uh, Fantasy Flight had a pretty big presence there, actually. Yeah. Um, But it was a good combination of having a big exhibit hall combined with just playing games. Which was a short walk away. It wasn't that far between the Hilton and the, the NEC, so it was it was doable. Right, and that that may be the one small negative I would have about the convention is that they have the gaming in a separate hotel, and that hotel is essentially a labyrinth. Yes. <laughs> to, to, when you go in there, you're like, well, where's the gaming? You walk down a hall, you walk down a hall, you open a door, and oh, a huge room of gaming. Is there more gaming? Yeah, they do that just for us. It's a normal hotel every day of the year but for us what they do is they reorganize all of the rooms just to make it really confusing for us so it's more of an adventure i think that's what they do Yeah, it's not a bad thing but it's not so if you're like looking to jump into a game it might be a little bit more difficult i think just to go around and find game i mean for me it was pretty easy but i have a somewhat unfair advantage because a lot of people know who i am but if you i think if people didn't know it might be more difficult to just jump into an open game there yeah. Now, UK Games Expo this year, I mean, I've been most years. I was there at the very first one, which, you know, was a small get together uh, in a hotel, just in a few rooms of the hotel. And that was it. Um, it, was a, it was a really, really tiny thing. And I went along to support them and I went along for a few years after that. Um, but essentially, it was just a few rooms in, in a hotel. And then about, I think it was three years ago, maybe, we moved to the Hilton. And again, it was still just in the Hilton, but we had much bigger rooms. And I was there working for CGE as an exhibitor. uh, And that was a big step up. This year, everything changed and we got the exhibit hall in the NEC. And I remember walking into the exhibit hall on the setup day. I mean, I've been to the NEC before for other events, but that's the first time we've had a big board gaming event there. Uh, And I just went, right, this is it now. Finally, 10, 10 years in the making and, you know, well done to the organisers, Richard and Tony, we've done it. And I certainly felt that this year for UK Games Expo was the first year it was a big, proper convention. I mean, that's no, no disrespect to the previous years because it's the same people organising it and it was the same coordination. It just felt like we'd taken that next big step upwards. So it was a good year to be there for your first time. Right. This is going to be, I think, looked at as a turning point for them. I will have to say... Yes. I deal with a lot of convention organizers and talk to them about different things. They are by far the most organized of anybody. Cool. I mean, from they have a book that they give to exhibitors that's professionally printed, extremely yes. clear on what they're looking for. At, I mean, they put the big ones to shame in that regard, honestly. Right. Well, I'll, I'll mention that to uh, Richard, Tony, and Pat next time I see them. It's got the seal of approval. Now, a lot of people um, say to me, UK Games Expo, because they know that I've now been to Gen Con, and they say, ah, UK Games Expo, you know, and Gen Con, and Essen, and, and how do they compare? And a lot of people think that UK Games Expo is like the small UK version of Essen, whereas I disagree. I think it's a small UK version of Gen Con. So moving on to Essen... Essen is great. I've been to Essen, I think, 16 years now. And the first year I got back from Essen, I said to myself, that's it. I'm going here every year of my life, no question. And, you know, the last five years I've been working with CGE there, so I've got to see less of it myself. But Essen is, is like kind of like the mecca for, for board games. It's absolutely insane. It's crazy. It's four days. It's unbelievable. But at the end of the day, it is just uh, lots of exhibit halls that are open from 10 till 6, and then you leave, and that's it. There's nothing else going on. How many years have you been going to Essen, then? I've gone three years, I think. Yes, mm-hmm. three years I've gone. Um, I agree with you, although <clears throat> I I always tell people I'm not sure that it's quite the mecca they might be looking for. Right. You know, you mentioned it's just a bunch of exhibit halls, and it is, and it's amazing, and it's a fantastic, but I, th- I think it's something to go see. I don't know that everyone has to go. Now, if I lived in... 
Europe itself, I'd probably go over here because it's a great shopping opportunity. And if you can drive there, yes. I know people who fill their cars Jenga style or, or Tetra style yep. so they can fit their bodies in and that's it. <laughs> I used to drive, not anymore. I can't do it anymore. Um, but yeah, I used to drive, and we—I mean, I was—I've been driving home with games on my I'm, knees, and I was driving. Um, yeah, we we, we jump packed as much in there because the number of new games that get released at Essen is is phenomenal. It's probably the the biggest single point of of new release for games. I think. And with most conventions, even Gen Con has places where you can go where you can sort of decompress. Essen, I have not found those places there, really. That's, if if no. you don't like crowds, I don't know that I would go there because it's one mm-hmm. massive crowd all the way up till the end on Sunday when it closes. Yep. And when it yep. does close, it kind of like deflates like a balloon every night. Everyone disappears. And so they all go back to these hotels, and hopefully you're at one of these hotels because if not, it's hard to find a strong gaming scene. Yes, definitely. And, you know, there is no, there's no open gaming area. The, so, you know, the, there is a place you can demo games. A lot of people think Essen is literally just, you go there, you buy games, and you can't ever play one. That, that's not true. A lot of exhibitors have demo tables, right. and you can sit down, and you can play the games and things like that. But there's no open gaming area. And as you say, there's nowhere to go and decompress. And at 6 o'clock, whenever the hall's closed, that's it. And because of the location of the Messe, which is where the where the Spiel is at, yeah, there's hotels nearby, but there's, you know, not like Indianapolis, for example, where you walk out the convention centre and literally, it's like Indianapolis has been taken over, just gamers everywhere. Essen, once it closes, you're kind of left on your own to, to go and do right, something. Right, I stayed in, I think, the closest hotel to Essen, and that's still a good walk. Um, but, again... That's I, I don't want to come off negative about the fair. I'm very excited to go there. The booths, the amount of effort that the companies put into their booths is unparalleled at any other convention. They come right. in days ahead of time and build spectacular th- setups. When you go there, yeah. you feel like you're in a shopping mall almost for board games. And it's just and and really there is games from all over the world. It has the most international flavor of any convention. And the focus is on board games. Surprise, surprise. I mean, I'm saying that, it sounds obvious, but UK Games Expo, for example, has got war gamers, role players, it's got, you know, rooms filled with people playing role-playing games, it's got all your miniatures games, it's got seminars, it's got bits of everything. Essen is pretty much predominantly board games. Big exhibit halls full of board games. Yeah, they have one hall, I want to say it's hall one, maybe, that has some comics and some... You know, toys and yeah, but it's a very small portion compared to other conventions. We're talking like five percent, maybe, of the whole convention, as opposed to others where you can. There's like eight hundred t-shirt stands at most conventions, for example. Yeah, exactly. But you're not going to find that at Essen. It's board game core. Yeah. So that's Essen. So moving on to Gen Con, I got to go to Gen Con for the first time last year, and I have to admit, it was a bit of an emotional experience. Um, few reasons. So I, I grew up uh, in the 80s and I played Dungeons and Dragons. So Gen Con for me was that big thing in America which we all dreamed of going to. And obviously Gen Con has evolved over the years and is not just wargaming or roleplaying anymore. It's now everything. But it's, it's massive. The size of it is comparable to Essen. And I always wanted to go. And last year I got to go. I was absolutely blown away. Just because... It was huge, and and there was so much going on. You've got the exhibitors' room, which is like Essen. You you have a room filled with booths, with exhibitors there, selling games and a chance to demo games. But then next to that, you have this open gaming hall, which is as big, if not bigger, than the exhibitors' hall, and it's just absolutely massive. And again there, there was these massive Netrunner tournaments, hundreds of people, And then the more you walk around, I mean, there's no chance I got to see anything working on the CG booth, but there were these massive rooms with all of these companies in. The True Dungeon was there. It was just insane. There was so much stuff going on, and it was going on till 2, 3 in the morning at times. Yeah, I I, I believe the convention never sleeps. I never got up at 4 in the morning to go look. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, again, this is another one that is very crowded, but I think... Gen Con stands out because there's this frenzied 
energy there. Yes. Um, Essen has a lot of huge releases at it. However, at Essen, if you go there for a release, you probably can get it. At Gen Con, you need mm-hmm. to get in there Thursday morning to get something, and you may not get it. And yeah. so there's almost this uh, – in America, it's similar to Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, where people go crazy. Yep. There's, there's some of that there. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, but once that initial insanity is over – it, it's it's exciting to go to, but I think Gen Con stands out because of that mixture of role playing and board gaming. I think it's mostly, it's not mostly, but a majority of is board gaming at this point, and yet you still see yep. hundreds of people dressed up in all kinds of strange yes. costumes. Oh yeah, the cos cosplay is crazy. I mean, funny story. Last last year, I got back uh, from Gen Con, landed uh, in in the UK, and two people who live. In the city near me, who I've known because we've seen each other at various clubs over the past few years, um, they got off the plane as well. And I was like, have you guys been at Gen Con? And they were like, yeah. And I, I'd not seen them for like, you know, three or four years or something, but I recognised them. And they said, yeah, have you, were you there as well? I was like, yeah, I was there. Oh, why were you there? I was working for CG. We, we, we had code names. It was like number one on the buzz list. They had no idea what I was talking about at all because they were there for Legends of the Five Rings role playing and everything else. So they'd been to Gen Con, and they're not predominantly board gamers. So that's the sort of thing with Gen Con. There's so many different groups of gamers all together under the same roof, but it's not to say that everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Some people do go there just for their for their own thing. Right, and Gen Con is the one convention that if you go there and say, I'm going to see everything, you are going to be disappointed <laughs> because you can't. Oh, yes. Major events happen at the same time at opposite ends. There's True yep. Dungeon, which is a really cool, you know, kind of LARPing experience to some degree that you can go see, but you can also completely miss if you blink. Um, there's just mm-hmm. so much going on there. And while Essen I, is huge, because it's condensed into those exhibit halls, I think over four days, you can go see all the booths at Essen. And you don't miss you anything, yeah. probably. But at Gen Con... You could, I could say, oh, there was the uh, costume parade at Saturday at 2 o'clock. Oh, there was the giant uh, robo-rally set up over here on Sunday at 1 o'clock or whatever. You have these different things, and if you, you miss them, you miss them. Yeah. So what other events should we talk about? BGG Con. It's another one which, uh, which I got to go to for the first time last year, and I will be going to the one this year again. So Board Game Geek Con. Now, there's two of these every year. Is that right? There is. The, the second one's a smaller one. I've not been to it. They originally called it BGG Loves Family, but they now move. I believe it's just BGG Con Spring. Right, which is in the spring. But the one that I went to was in Right, November. that's their big one at this point in time. And of conventions this size, I believe there's three of them. It's BGG Con, Dice Tower Con, and... Um, uh, Geekway to the West, I believe, is almost as big as these two, or or as big as them. Right. So BGG Con for me was an unusual one, coming off the back of Gen Con and um, Essen, because CG had a booth there. So I was working at the booth, and it was the quietest convention I've ever been to. There was great periods of time. I mean, normally I'm demoing games and running the booth from like you know eight or nine in the morning all the way through, non-stop hordes of people. And at BGG Con, the booth was really quiet. I think I demoed maybe two half games of Prodigal's Club, and that was it. It was really quiet. Now, our booth was in the second trade hall, which a lot of people didn't realise existed, so that, that was partially the reason. But I think the other reason is that the focus on BGG Con is people want to go there and play games. Yes, that's definitely it. BGG Con is straight up for playing games, uh, especially... Uh, I, I want to say one of the biggest draws to go there is to play all the new games that just came out at Essen. Yes. Because they are mostly there, and so they have a room there or a section of a room there that's all about hot games that, from Essen where they're set up on the table, and that room is never empty. There's always people yeah, there So guess games. where I'm going to be working this year? That's where you are in the hot games room? Exactly. I, I basically said to CG, I said, look, I don't like standing around on a booth, not really doing anything. I want to be demoing games. Adrenaline's going to be one of the hot games that come out as a Vesson. Please, can you give me a copy of Adrenaline, put me in the hot games room, and I'll just demo that solidly all day long. And they said, yeah, that's a great idea. So that's where I'll be this year. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm now looking forward to it again, because I just, I don't like not being busy. Um, so, yeah, hot games room... 
should be uh, should be good. So that that's where I'm going to be at BGG Con. But yeah, there's a lot of people there who are like, well, we we've been to Gen Con. We've we've you know some of them have been to Essen, uh, or some of them have managed to get all of the the games that have come out at Essen. But there isn't a big focus on the actual trade halls uh, and the exhibit halls. It's it's more just lots and lots of rooms of people people playing games. And for that, it, it's it's great. It is um, the. It's it's a it's a it's a strong convention. It's a lot of fun. I get more gaming there than any other convention, but that's mostly because I don't need to work as much there. Yeah. Uh, it, but it has some disadvantages. The location's not the best. It's in an airport at a convent. I mean, it's in a hotel at an airport. Yeah, it's perfect for me. Oh, you don't like to leave? I mean, I, I well, no. I, yeah, I mean, I flew in. And there I am. Well, no, no, that, that part is oh, great. Brilliant. But if you like for meals, it's the hotel meals are not oh, exceptionally yeah. good. There's some great restaurants and stuff in Dallas, but it's kind of a pain to get to them, especially if you don't own a car. And you've yeah, I jumped in um, Gil Hover's car and we went to Hard Eight one night. So that right, was, you got to make a friend there. The lines, <laughs> the lines at BGG are also longer than any other convention I've been to, even Gen Con. The, they were, yeah, they were, they were massive. It's not. I mean, the lines are are probably longer at Gen Con, but Gen Con knows how to move those lines. BGG has not yet figured that out. You some right. You're going to be in a registration line for two, three hours, which is an unfortunate thing. But you know, uh, other than that, and 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 you need to go in with the right expectations. I think BGG Con more than any other con, you're going to meet a higher quality of gamer, and I don't mean that in a positive or negative way. What I mean is. You're going to meet people who are really good at games, for the most part. These are yes. people who play a lot of games. I call them alpha gamers. They're the people who test new games for their game groups. And so you may like yep. that situation, like, oh, yes, the quality of gaming here is immense. But you can also be destroyed in that situation if you're not necessarily wanting to play at this higher level to some degree. So mm-hmm. you, that's, I mean, that's not 100% the case, of course. No, but I, I but agree. But there's less you, casual you know, gaming, UK- I guess I should say. Exactly. Yeah, the UK Gaming Expo, Gen Con, and Essen, you get families turning up. You get a lot of families turning up that are, you know, on the outskirts of the gaming hobby, but they've come along and they want to see all the new family games, and you might end up sitting down at a table and playing with them. You're not going to find that at BGG Con. Everybody at BGG Con is probably a, a gamer, hardcore or, or, you know, whatever, but yeah, you're not going to find your... You casual gamers, I don't think. Well, part of that is also because of the location, again. Right. Like, I, I would not take my family there because there's nothing else for them to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh. Um, while other conventions that you can go to, there's maybe things in that area to go see, or or there's, like, a kid's area that the BGG has a 13-plus policy right. um, at it. So, again, okay. this is not necessarily a negative or a, or a positive thing. It's just something that you should know if you're going there. That's kind of what to expect. Yeah. So, Dice Tower Con. One that I've not been to, um, and now that we've got Josh on board working for CGE, he's our, he's our representative that will go to that, but tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's very similar to Board Game Geek Con, actually, with the exception being that there's a lot more families there, because we do have a children's room, so if you, so you're gonna, there's probably a heavier emphasis towards maybe casual style games um, mm-hmm. that's going to happen there. Obviously, I'm very biased here, right? So I'm, you know... If you say, what are the negatives of Dice Tower Con? I want to say, well, there's, <laughs> there isn't any. Right. We're, we're still working on getting our line down. In fact, I talked to the convention yesterday about that. We, we have some ideas how to make that line go a lot quicker next year. And next year, we're doubling to 3,500. So that's a, wow. a pretty big jump. So the, the advantage is, obviously, is the location, right? Because mm-hmm. if you want to, you can. we're five minutes from Disney World. We're wow. you know, 10 minutes from Universal Studios and SeaWorld. And so there's a, you know, and it's just Orlando. There's a tons of things to do. There's about 100 million restaurants. You know, there's just a, a lot going on there. Now, you may not like the heat, right? It's, it's probably the worst week of the year to go right. to Orlando um, <laughs> because of just it, the crowds are there. We do it during the Independence Day, um, which was, I, I don't know, something to do with some other country. Um, uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, that, that's going on in there. But at the same time, you can see fireworks while you're there. So that's kind of interesting. Right. Uh, for gaming, I think it's the easiest place to jump into a game anywhere I know of. Okay. Uh, it's very, very friendly in that regard. And part of that is me and my crew, I really try to push that. So I'll, I'll walk around and if I see, you know, teacher want it and I know how to teach the game, you know, it's, it's not. I Last year, I, what did I see? I saw, um, what's the Eagle game about painting? Oh, you did a, you did a video on it. Um, did I? Oh, The Gallerist. The Gallerist, right. And I oh, saw yeah, that yeah, and yeah. I said... 
okay, maybe someone else can teach that one. You know, because you have to be kind of in the mood to teach gallerists. In the mood, and you've got to know it, like, <laughs> back of your hand, yeah. But so, I mean, and I can't be everywhere, but what I do is I try to encourage the other Dice Towers and the people there, and it really works well. People go around and teach games consistently. It, I think, and I haven't been to Geekway to the West, and I heard that that one's similar. I think it's the easiest place to jump in a game there is. Because right. the... BGG has these two, and, and, and I would probably put that one second, where they have these games want it, teachers want it signs. Those things are amazing. I think every convention should be required to use them. Yeah. Because you're like, well, where's a game I can jump into? Oh, there's a sign. I can just go jump into that game. And so I like that. I like the family friendliness of it. I'm pretty proud of the fact that our percentage of women is very high. It's okay. not 50%, but I would like to get it there. Right. Although the percentage of women going on the Dice Tower cruise this year is almost 50%. It's Wow. Just, okay. Uh, maybe it's the cruise factor. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, combining sort of gaming with a holiday kind of thing. So let's, let's just talk attendance figures. UK Games Expo, going back to the start, attendance figures were up Depending on which which number you read, if you read turnstile count or unique people, it was up either forty something percent or eighty something percent. So that I mean that's just a ginormous increase. I don't know. You, you mentioned Dice Tower Con is going from what number to three and a half thousand? Well, we went from fifteen hundred to three and a half thousand. That's a big increase. Wow. Well, we were <laughs> we were limited by space. I don't actually know where our upper limits are. Unlike Origins and Gen Con and UK Gaming Expo, they know where their upper limits are because they don't cap their tickets. Gotcha. Like BGG could probably be much bigger too, but they cap their tickets. Yeah. Now the figures for Gen Con this year have they been released yet? I think they, they have been actually. It was up, down. Well, yes, it went down slightly. However, right. Turnstiles went up a bit. Right. And so what that's showing is more people, people staying are staying for longer. longer times and yes. and less people are going as a casual fare. And I really I would highly recommend against going to Essen or Gen Con as a casual thing. It's just too Correct. difficult. Yeah. Don't just pop in for the day. <laughs> and, and and most people are doing that. And Origins showed the same thing too. Um Origins dropped. Origins by like five hundred people. Well, here's the thing, though. Origins probably went up by about 10% because what happened is every year at Origins, Starlight Citadel, which is a big gaming store, yeah. they run yeah. a Magic the Gathering tournament there. That tournament brings in about 3,000, 3,500 people who come in. Most of those people, a majority, like 90% of those people, come in for that Magic the Gathering tournament and leave, right? That's okay. the only reason they come. Well, that tournament did not happen this year. So ah. all those people were gone, and yet the numbers only went down by four or 500. Which means, oh, I didn't know that. Which right. means that the increase at Origins really was that much higher. And okay. so I was just talking to the uh, director of Origins yesterday. I feel like I was talking to a lot of directors yesterday. Um, and he was talking about how they're, some of the improvements Origins is making. Because Origins has a unique setup in which they have an exhibit hall, but they also have a semi-exhibit hall. Where yep. it's open much longer mm -hmm. and... You know, it opens at like nine in the morning and goes till midnight, I believe. Or yeah, tell me about it. Guess guess what? Muggings had to had to man the booth all of that time. Well, I know that because I saw you over there with a <laughs> smile on your face. And, oh yes, <laughs> but but it's kind of a neat hybrid, right? Because there's an exhibit yeah. hall, but it's also very casual, and you can go play games um, more easily than anywhere else. And I'm hoping that this idea, this concept, catches on, and other conventions start doing it. Yeah, although it's still okay. pretty unique to Origins. Um, right. So yeah, I, I definitely got a different feel from Origins as I as I've had from the other ones. I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. I still think Origins is the closest to UK Gaming Expo. Okay. Um, but right. I, yes. But I also think that you are coming at Origins. You're seeing it from an exhibitor eye, so you know you have to be there and all that in a different spot. Mm -hmm. As an attendee, I found that most people who go to Origins consider it to be their favorite con. Yeah. Now, one thing that I know. Um, Guys, I've had some dealings with WizKids, and WizKids don't attend Gen Con anymore. They've shifted their focus to Origins. And I caught up with um, CEO of, uh, of WizKids at Gen Con, because he, he just happened to be there. And I chatted with him, and I said, are you planning to come back? And he said, no. Nope. He said, we're, we're absolutely happy that Origins is going to be our focus. And he expects some other big publishers to also go that way. And that surprised me, because I thought Gen Con was the place where everybody should be. 
and to find that they're just having a presence at Origins and no presence at Gen Con, I don't know, that, it seemed odd to me. Well, I don't necessarily agree with it. However, WizKids would be a normal person at, at uh, Gen Con, at Origins. They can rule the roost. They have their huge Hero Clicks tournament, their huge Dice Masters tournament. They have these things running there. Um, also, the uh, CEO of WizKids is the uh, president of Gamma. So there's that right. too. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, which runs Origins. Yes. So there's a little bit of that going on. I do know that I would not be surprised if WizKids has a small board game booth at Gen Con next year. Okay. Because uh, I don't know if you know Zev well, yeah, from yeah, yeah, Zev, Games Zev's. is now running their yeah, board yeah, yeah. games. And he told me that he would like to have at least a board game presence at Gen Con since you know board gotcha. games are a pretty big deal. But yeah. yes um, – other companies are making the move to making Origins their headquarters because it's cheaper by far Okay, um, to go to Origins. And if you, sometimes it's better to be a big fish in a smaller pond than the other way around. Because at, at, right. at Gen Con, and Gen Con's, I would say, almost 50% more expensive than Essen. Wow. Okay. F- for booth space and such. Um, now, this year, CG did something that I've never seen at, at uh Gen-, Gen Con before, where they had their own room, yeah. which which many publishers do, but they were allowed to sell from that room, which I've never seen before. Yeah. I don't know how. I got asked so many times, how have you managed to make this happen? And I'm like, that's a part of the conversation I'm not aware of. So I still don't know to this day how we got that, because that's kind of not my area. Um, but, but we did. And I don't know if that's going to open the doors for other people in future. If it does, it's going to change how Gen Con operates, I think. Yes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It might be that they said, right, you had it this year, but you're not having it next year, in which case we need to do something different. Or they might say, yeah, you can have it, but then all of the other people will be saying, well, we want that as well. Well, what did you think about being in that room? That room was a good distance from... It was a good distance, yeah. The exhibit hall. It was very close to the gaming hall. It was very close to the line, actually, where people lined up to go to Gen Con. But yeah. you know, from the exhibit hall, we're talking a good... 15 minute walk did you like being over there so my uh, i i get worried about a lot of things and i get nervous about a lot of things and for the two three months before gen con i was really worried and nervous about the room expecting it to be lots of people turning up for the ticketed events because all most of our ticket events had sold out so we knew people were going to turn up for them but i was thinking nobody's going to find us and what was really disappointing is that every time gen con put any kind of press things out they just put maps of the exhibitors hall and we weren't on that they didn't put any other maps of the rest of the convention and because check games edition were not even on the exhibitors list because we were a sponsor we had to be a sponsor to get a room and it cost us a lot of money but we weren't officially on the exhibitors list so i was thinking people are not going to know we're here and yet it is true that a few people went there, didn't realise that they were th- we were there, contacted us afterwards and said, I came looking for you, but I couldn't find you, and you weren't on the exhibitors list. By the end of day one, all of my nervousness was, was gone out the window because the room was absolutely packed pretty much constantly until 11 o'clock at night. So I was very happy about that. Didn't quite have enough people to man every single table, but we were fine. It, it, it did work for us, and we didn't... We didn't, um, yeah, at no point were we really quiet, which, which is what I was expecting considering how far we were out. So, yeah, it worked fine. And I think if we can get another room next year, then we, we probably will. So what's your favourite? I knew you were going to ask that because I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> and I get asked this a lot, and I honestly can't say. Um, Gen Con for me last year, as I say, when I got back from it, it absolutely blew my mind. And at that moment in time, I would have said Gen Con was better than Essen as an experience. It depends what you want to go for. If you want to go and wander around exhibit halls, get demos of games and see hundreds and hundreds of new games released, buy them and then just go back to your hotel, Essen. If you want to go somewhere where there is massive amounts of open gaming, seminars, tournaments, you know, partying, cosplay everywhere, Gen Con. UK Games Expo if you're in the UK kind of thing. I'm lucky enough that I get to go to each of these events. A lot of people will only go to the ones that they can, you know, get to, um, you know, that's in their country or, or, or whatever. If I could only ever go to one of them, oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> I would probably, at the moment, have to say Gen Con 
just because of the the experience and the absolute correct. Plus, I love America and I love Americans and I get such a warm vibe from being. I never want to come home. You know, I, I, when I'm there and I'm leaving the airport, I don't want to come home. And that's not because I've been on holiday. And it's not because of the weather. Well, the weather helps. But it's just because everybody seems genuinely so nice. And that, that's, that's my perception as a visiting person. I'm sure, obviously, you know, there's lots of things going on in the country or whatever. Well, especially right now. But, you know, there's lots of things that you don't see when you're visiting that you would see if you lived there. So I, I have a very, very fairly rose-tinted perspective on it all. Um, so yeah, so right now I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Gen Con. Are you allowed to give your favorite? Well, it's a tough one, right? Because obviously I really like Dice Tower Con, but at the same yes. time, Dice Tower <laughs> Con is the one I host. So it is a it is a ton of work for me to go in and make sure everyone's having a good time. I don't have time yeah. to have a good time myself as much as make sure everyone else has a good time. So let's take that one out of the mix. It's a hard call. I think if I was only allowed to go one, I would probably go to Gen Con. However, part of that's because I'm in the industry, and I know that's where I can meet a lot of people. Essen, right. you know, is the same thing. If I was a game player, I might say Origins or UK Gaming Expo, depending on which side of the pond I was on. Okay. Right? Because I love the mix of having a fun convention hall and then um, when it's over, going to eat at some place nice. And then when that's done, just hanging out and playing games in a casual way. Right. And those conventions are just such a nice mix of that. Now, I went to, I've went i been to Origins for over 10 years. It's the convention I've gone to more than any other. So I do have some nostalgia to it in that regard. I also think it has the best mix of restaurants um, outside the convention center than any other convention. Okay. But – and I got I, – I probably have friends that I've made there too, and that's another thing that, you know – yeah. Goes into that mix. If you've been to the same convention many times, after a while you start recognizing people there, and you just mm-hmm. like hanging out with them and having fun. But there isn't one that I dislike really, and I think that's the the thing I always try to impress on people. If you go to a convention, you're probably going to have a good time. You just need to go in with the right expectations. So, like if you go to Essen, like oh, I can't wait to play a whole lot of games. That's probably the wrong expectation for that convention. Right. You could play some games, but it's not the same as another convention so if you go in with the right expectation i think every convention can be a ton of fun and there we go so go to all of them is what we're saying no 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 i don't i actually (laughs) i actually highly recommend against that because we go to them because we're in the industry yes it's a very expensive thing and some like i always tell people you know they're they're like oh you should be going to essen for people in america or if you're not in america you should go to gen con well think about that because you're going to pay $1,000 $1,000 for a ticket, yep. plus lodging, plus all that. If you really love playing games, you could have bought like 40 games with that money. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, you're entitled. I mean, I, since getting back from Gen Con last year and this year, a couple of friends contacted me and said, oh, I've heard what you said about Gen Con. I, I, I might look at going next year. And I've had to say to them, look, think about it. Because as you say, £1,000 for the, for, the, for the flight, then you've got your hotel, your accommodation, you've got everything else. It's a massively expensive trip. If you are an absolute gaming fanatic like me and you're going to love the experience of going over there, do it. But you're effectively paying for that experience. If it's worth it, that whole worth it is all down to personal you know, subjectivity. Right. So, yeah. So next one on the horizon, Essen. Two months away, less than two months away. It is. I got a, yeah. a tiny convention, and, and I guess we should quick pop in there. There's tiny conventions everywhere. I'm going to a, a small convention in Connecticut um, at Portal Games uh, in, in September. And there's a lot of these that are all over the world, too, these smaller mm-hmm. conventions. And sometimes that may be the best fit for somebody because it's, like it's just like a big game gathering. Yeah. Sometimes they're a day. Sometimes they're two days. And they're a way just to get together and play games. And, yeah, you might not have exhibit halls. There might be like three exhibitors there, and one of them is the local game store. But that can still be a ton of fun, and, and those are also something I would recommend. Yeah, we have these pretty much every weekend in the UK. I go to a few of them, and they generally tend to be about two to 300 people, one guy in the corner selling games, and then everybody else playing games. There's nobody officially there as an exhibitor or, or publisher, apart from me. I turn up with my CG hat and watch your game hat on, and I, and I do demos of new games. But it is just you know, hotel, rooms, books, or the last one I went to was at a university campus. Um, 
And Manicon, Midcon, and Bacon are the three big ones in the UK. And I say big, they're like, yeah, two to three hundred people. They've been running for 33, 34 years. So, yeah, they're, they're still going now. Um, but there's lots of other ones going on all the time. So there's always something available. And, yeah, if you're in the UK, don't think UK Games Expo is the only one. I'm going to Dragon Meat at the start of December. Dragon Meat was originally a role-playing thing, I think. And now it's still very heavily into role-playing, but there's a lot of board games as well there. So that's just a one-day thing in London, which, which I'm going to. Uh, again, we got, a, we got a booth there. But yeah, they're, they're going on all over the place. So um, it's good to know that you know, there's lots of things like that going on all the time, not just in the UK, but I'm sure everywhere. I agree. There we go. So um, anything else you wanted to add to conventions? No, really, we could talk about conventions for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and each, each one specific things about what to prepare and how to get ready for that but like i said i think the biggest thing is just managing your expectations yeah yeah that's a good one and as i said what you said earlier on was really good is that you know if you go into it with the right expectations you'll enjoy it also it's really handy if people come from across the ocean and, and give you snacks i found i like that part about conventions <laughs> well i'll bring some uh, i'll bring some new ones to uh, to bgg con so well, no, um, I, I i owe you now when i come over to well how, um, how long did they last the next uk gaming expo well, they actually lasted longer than you might think because they were in a luggage <laughs> that got lost. <laughs> so, uh, right, okay. I, I, I don't know. They might still yes. be around, but I doubt that they are if there's any yeah. left. I gave a packet to the BGG crowd as well, and I checked with people afterwards. So I, I caught up with Stephanie Straw afterwards, and I said, so did you get any of the English biscuits that I brought across? And she said, no, 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 no. And we were like, oh, I wonder who got them. And then we got a tweet from uh, uh, Eric Martin with basically him holding the packet up to his mouth, pouring all of the crumbs in. And it was like, there you go, evidence. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm causing some trouble by bringing those over. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what I'm going to carry on doing anyway. So yeah, I'll bring some more over for, for BGGCon. Anyway, it's been a pleasure having you on. I appreciate you giving up your, your time. And uh, we'll probably both get, a bit, get back to our, uh, our, our normal day job of doing videos. Ah, this was more fun, but yes. <laughs> and I will catch up with you at Essen then. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show. And that's where I'm going to wrap it up for Podcast 39. So hopefully I'm going to start getting things back, uh, back to normal. Um, we'll see how the work goes and we'll see how future podcast recordings go. I do have a special guest lined up for the next episode, which is Stephen Bonacore from Stronghold Games. So I'm going to be posting uh, to my guild for those people who have any questions for him. And um, hopefully that interview will go well and we'll see how it goes. So thanks for listening. As I say, if you want to stay in contact with me, Twitter, Gaming Rules Vids, Facebook is Gaming Rules, uh, YouTube channel, Gaming Rules Videos, and obviously the BGG Guild, Guild number 2258. Until next time, take care and thanks for listening. <laughs>